Hi guys, welcome back to the Captain Fishbeard YouTube channel, I'm Tom Spark. Today's guest that I have drawing with me is wonderful Glasgow-based artist Neil Slorrance, and we get an amazing cameo from one of his friends called Herman. Now, Herman is an animal. I wonder if you can guess what sort of animal Herman is. Hi guys, welcome back to the table. I am here with the wonderful artist Neil Slorrance. Hi Neil. Hi, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> We're all good, all good. How about you? Yeah, all good, all good. I'm excited. Yeah, good, good. I'm very pleased. This should be a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about, about your work later on, uh, on on various different projects. But um, yeah, would you like to just give yourself a brief introduction to start with? Sure, yeah. So my name is Neil Slorens and I'm a cartoonist and comic artist. So I do a lot of my own comics, a lot of kind of um, self-published kind of autobiographical stuff. And I do a lot of all ages stuff. Um, I'm probably best known for my book Dungeon Fun, which is a big all ages adventure. And I also do loads of other bits and bobs too. Fantastic. They are all really, really good. I've got lots and lots of your work. I think I'm almost a, a Slorens completist, actually. I <laughs> might have everything here, but we'll, we'll see about those in a minute. So anyway, right. Uh, before I grab the box, have you got a drink with you? I'm like uh, doubling up here. I've got oh. coffee and a water. Fant You're not going to sleep tonight, Neil. <laughs> Decaf coffee. Decaf, that's, that's the key. That's the key. Well done. Good stuff. They are both on the on the allowed list. Have you had your dinner yet? Yes, actually, my lovely girlfriend actually made a big salmon thing. It was like salmon and pastry. I don't, I can't remember what it's called. Like a salmon croup. Salmon or, on croup, yeah. Like that, yeah. It was lovely. Fantastic. Fancy. Pretty fancy. <laughs> Living it up. Good stuff. Right, I have a big gold box. Uh, I'll show you on the screen there. You can see the big mm -hmm. gold box there. I'm going to show it here. This was the previous box, but it's been sprayed gold, so it looks much more fancy. So let's open this one up, and I'm going to take out the first thing. And what we have is we're going to draw. Okay, this is a long one. <laughs> Thanks, Xander, from this one from Twitter. Professor Alan McDonald, a man-sized otter and philanthropist. And that was an incredibly long, Ow. but there's also oh. going to be a couple of couple more bits there. Do you want to note that? Is that <laughs> that's Professor Alan MacDonald, a man-sized otter and philanthropist. And is this to be all the same person? Well, exactly. <laughs> Normally, we only get we would only get one there. We'd get a man-sized otter, and then we'd pick off the other two categories. But Xander's helpfully put everything in there, so um, I'm going to think we're going to do left, definitely do a man-sized otter. So stick with right. that, yeah. and then it's the next bit is going to be he's a uh, a bon viveur and raconteur. I don't even know a bon a bon viveur and raconteur. So I'm not sure how we're going to draw that. To be honest, that was from Spoon Boots off Twitter. I think just make him uh, kind of wild. And finally, we're going to have he's in a volcano. Thanks to Charles H Raymond for that one. Okay, so I think Bon Vivant and Raconteur, I'm just going to do a, a kind of uh, fancy, dandy, gentleman-y sort of vibe for that, I think. Man-sized otter in a sort of dandy within a volcano or on a volcano. What do you think? Is it doable? I like, I like the sound of a man-sized otter. Maybe we could mix in a, some kind of philanthropy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Could be helping somebody out. Yeah, or helping some people out. I'm trying to think about Alan McDonald. I'm, I can't picture him. I, I, don't, I, don't, I think he's made up. I think the right. uh, man's eyes Dr. Alan McDonald is, <laughs> it just happens to be his name. I'm pretty sure he's made up anyway. So, um, I'm going to start with an R and then see stuff. how it goes from there. <laughs> God, what does an otter look like? Okay, they have got ears, haven't they? All right. Brilliant. 
So where do the suggestions come from? Do they just come from, from Twitter? Twitter? Yeah, I should have said that at the start, really, actually, because they're they're all from Twitter. So I ask people occasionally to uh, to top up my, uh, my my list of suggestions, and they um, they duly come through. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah, they're fantastic. Some people really uh, get involved with it, as you can see by the man-sized otter. <laughs> How could an otter do philanthropy? What could it be doing? Maybe I'm trying to think about. I've got him as a kind of real sort of dandy, uh, sort of almost Victorian kind of style gentleman, but it's um, how can he be a philanthropist if from inside a volcano as well? I'm sure. I'm sure there's been places uh, in Scotland that I've drove past where it's been like, watch out, otters about. <laughs> Like, you need to slow down because there's an otter crossing here. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be crossing the road and uh, causing mischief. <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's that rather than they're uh, they're going to steal your tyres or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you missing the cons? Yeah, you... definitely, definitely. Yes. So, like I say, I don't miss the stress. It is quite, a, <laughs> quite anxiety producing at times. But it's, um, yes. yeah, I, I, like I say, I, I do miss all the all the people and um, I'm just doing them. They're just fun. But yeah, there's, I suppose there's a small chance we might still get some towards the end of the year, but it's it's not looking too likely now, is it? I don't think. So. I mean. There was top of all in that. Yeah. They've cancelled, and that's in November. So. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't look like going to get much, does it? No, no. <laughs> you might still be able to do like little kind of local ones and things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, that's a good point. Around that time. Um, hopefully. It'll be weird, though. I think there'll be like maybe a weird vibe about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. It is quite a sort of close quarters kind of um, kind of thing, isn't it? Everyone's sort of pushed up against each other most of the time, so it's a it's a strange thing to try and distance that. Yeah, it's funny. Like I never really thought of it just now, but like I mean, <clears throat> well now that I think of it, you always tend to come away from cons feeling a bit groggy. Yeah, you get like a con crud. Yeah, and then you think, well, I'm like, I'm handling cash all day, and I'm shaking hands with people all day. Yeah, people are touching my books, and I'm touching books and stuff like that. Like, exactly. Yeah, everyone's touching the same sort of stuff. Yeah, and that not a lot of people at home will will know this, obviously, but Neil um, kisses on the mouth every customer he has. <laughs> that's that's yeah. another thing that's going to be a spreader of germs. <laughs> That's why I keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> what would a philanthropist or our go for? Would you maybe be big on like fish charities or nature reserves? Oh, or that's a that's good thinking. Yeah, he's gonna be kind to the river creatures, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that oh, that's giving me some food for thought actually. There. Yeah. Have you ever seen an otter? Yeah, yeah, a few. There's a local wildlife place near me, so we often pop down there, and there's otters there. And um, have you are you familiar with otters? I mean, not, you know. Not really. I mean, I like them. I know, like, stuff about... I know they like to hold stones. 
Oh, yeah, don't they hold hands as well? Yeah, they like to keep like little stones, and I think they like to hold hands as well. That's beautiful. So they are kind, but also, you know, um, Terry Nutkins from the Really Wild show. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. He lost his finger to an otter. No way. He did. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. Ooh. You wouldn't have thought they were uh, capable of taking a man's finger off, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. I've got to make this man size. <laughs> so, uh, maybe I should put in like a man. Very rough people at home. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we don't expect you to be doing your uh, your full work on this sort of uh, very quick time scale and completely on the spot without any uh, any forewarning. <laughs> <laughs> so how did Dungeon Fun come about originally? Do you know it was really kind of weird one like um <clears throat> so me and my friend colin bell um, we kind of met through mutual friends and i knew that he was really into comics just as like a reader yeah and uh, well he knew that i was an artist at the time so he um we started doing a web comic and the web comic was called john bot versus martha and it was about like a robot um and like a, a human lady and they were going through a divorce and it was like oh. all it was a bit like a kind of sitcom kind of thing yeah and, but we really like cut our teeth on it because i really learned so much about comics because i had to do one every week and i was always to like a deadline every week yeah and i just learned loads through that and my kind of style developed as well over like the year or two of doing that so once that finished um, I kind of thought, well, it'd be nice to work with Colin again on something else. Um, so I had an idea, like I'd, I remember drawing up a, a character of this little kind of girl adventurer. Yeah. That I really liked, and it was kind of inspired by like stuff like Zelda and kind of more cartoony stuff, a little bit of Adventure Time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can see those elements in it. Let me grab it. Yeah. And. I remember I just I showed him that I think I sent him an email saying like I'd like to do something with it. It'd be cool if we did maybe another web comic with just like more of a kind of like fancy element. And I remember like the the subject of the email was just dungeon fun because it was just something I've thought of, of what to name the email. Yeah. And, and the rest is history, really. It's fantastic. It's absolutely wonderful, and it's you know it's, it's really taken off, hasn't it? It's uh, it's been extremely popular. Yeah, it's been great. It's been super popular, which I'm so proud of because um, it's just like a lot of kids and stuff are really into, it, and for them it's like their their first comic, or for some it's their favourite comic, which is it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's something about my. Uh... My kids are certainly into it as well. There's been there. Uh, I'll just show book one as well. I had the compendium there, but I've also got a copy of book one there. Is that still available? Can we still buy pick up uh, Dungeon Fund in some sort of form? Yeah, you can still buy the, the full thing, so the collected edition. You can still buy that. Uh, that's on my Etsy, and it's also on Amazon, I think, and a couple of other places. And you can buy the first few issues of Pirate Fund from me as well. That's of the next course. bit in the story with added pirates. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. So is there going to be a continuation on that one? Is there uh, anything more in the works? Do we know? We're going to do more Pirate Funds, I think. We're going to do a couple more Pirate Funds. Great. And then we'll just see how we feel after that, I think. Because yes. um, we don't want to drag it out either. We don't want to 
<clears throat> we don't want to make it like longer than it kind of should be. I think we'd rather just tell like a really good, solid story. Yeah. No, fantastic. That's. And what about yourself? What have you been working on? I'm still working on the second issue of uh, the Misadventures of Spring Hill Jack. So that is the. Um, so yeah, the second issue of the one that's already out. Um, the, yeah, that's it's taking a while to be honest. <laughs> I keep filling my time by uh, video calling uh, artists and drawing with them. So it's um, yeah, my actual drawing is uh, is slowing down. But that's fine. I'm taking my time over it. It's not going to be rushed. So um, yeah, yeah. it'll come when it comes. <laughs> Comics takes a long time. Like a really long, it's a very laborious thing. Absolutely, they really, really do. But um, I think you, if you can um, do them autobiographically, I've got a few of yours here as well. Oh, so the, uh, the selection that I've got here, I've got uh, Modern Slurrence, uh, Torts and Tinder, and then I've yep. got the Canada issue, and I've got the Finland issue. I think that's probably my favourite, the Finland one as well. It's, uh... Yeah, so that was more of like a, a travel log of when... Yeah. I did like an artist residency in Finland, which sounds dead fancy. Um, so I was there for a, a whole month in like a kind of like a big shared studio where I was shading. It was like a kind of studio slash hostel kind of thing. And I was sharing it with, um, was it, I think it was like 10 other comic artists. Wow. And I loved it. It was just such a great experience, just such a a brilliant thing to do um, and I think I mentioned in the book like I almost didn't do it like when I got yeah. there I, I talked myself out of it I was like oh no I don't know if I can afford it and oh, maybe I could just make a comic <laughs> here and, do, do, do. and I remember talking to a few people I was talking to my friend Kit about it and he was just like shut up <laughs> <laughs> Just go. Probably didn't. <laughs> um, and um, I did. And in fact, Kit and another friend uh, of ours, well, Timothy Winchester, you might know him, he, they actually came over to Finland while I was there. Yes, yeah, um, a picture in the, in the back of the book of, uh, yeah. of you with, uh, with Kit and, uh, and Timothy Winchester there, tucking into some donuts. Yeah. They love their donuts there, so we had a great time. We went to see the the Moon Museum, all sorts. It was brilliant. That's awesome. What a what a fun time. I think Dungeons and Dragons is getting like a big kind of resurgence at the moment. Yeah, I'm seeing more and more of it around actually. Yeah, but you see it at conventions and stuff like a lot of. Uh, the artwork and a lot of what people are into is like uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've actually been. You know, I've been. Um, people have been kind enough to to commission me to draw their characters or characters within their games, actually, which is which is fantastic and, and such fun to do. Ah, oh, that's cracking. Yeah, that's great. Uh... I've had a few of those too where I've been commissioned to do like the party of Dungeons and Dragons characters. I love it. Oh yeah, it's great. You can really go to town with it as well. It's uh, it's really, really good fun. Right. I'm trying to think of more ways he's going to be a ph philanthropist, but it's uh, it's not proving easy. <laughs> <laughs> who came up with these again so that was Xander on the Twitter who came up with Alan McDonald and then Bon Viver Raconteur was Spoon Boots and then yeah the volcano was Charles H. Raymond Charles is going to be on a forthcoming episode of Fishbeard's Draw with me uh, do you know Charles I, from the circuit of uh, cons I can't picture a face but I probably know can't picture him, but I probably know his face. You definitely That's will something. do. You definitely yeah. will do. He's got a, a great series called Death Inc. Um, yeah, so yeah, he's done a few, uh, few, a few really lovely things actually. Yeah, but yeah, you'll definitely recognise him if you saw him. Ah, oh, brilliant! Right. 
I am almost there, I think. Yeah. You happy? I'm just into coloring my little man. <laughs> I haven't that's thought about doing some colours yet. I'm gonna do a little bit of hint of colour. I always over colour my things, so I'm not gonna do this time. I'm just gonna put a few hints in. Yeah. So what are you using? Are you using pens? Yeah, I'm literally using some brush pens and um, some uh, yeah brush colours as well. So uh, putting a few a few dabs of colour here and there. What about you? Hey, I'm using Clip Studio. Or, oh, great! Yeah, yeah, that's come up on the on the channel. Yeah, that's uh, some excellent software. Um, but. I try lots of things. Like I know uh, Procreate's really popular. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like that, and that's really good. You can um, get the iPad as well, haven't you? So you don't need yeah. a full-on tablet. Uh, what sort of it, hardware do you have actually? Yeah. So I've got. Um, this is a Cintiq. This oh, cool. Thing. And I've got that connected to a computer. But I also I've got an iPad as well, so I like to kind of try that two but i'm okay. kind of not at the point yet where i can do everything on the ipad i still like <laughs> the big sim ticket kind of still feels like um it feels like home yeah absolutely but, i know that so well yeah i've tr tried a few different ways but i always go back to the same ways of doing things yeah. but um but i love the ipad like i love how kind of portable yeah it is and you can sit on the couch and it's just one screen you don't need to plug in two monitors and all these wires and stuff absolutely that's that's the absolute beauty of it i've got something called a wacom mobile studio oh, um, wow. which is the um yeah it, it's very very similar to, to the ipad sort of thing but it is you literally just press it on it's it's got all its own sort of computer workings in there so as you say you don't have to hook it up um to any other computer um which is which is wonderful and it makes it obviously very portable as well cool right I think I'm done. Happy. Good, 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 good. Let's go add a little bit more colour over this bit. And good. Okay, obviously I can't see yours. Uh, do you want to say anything about it or explain anything about it? It is... I wonder if I can swing this round. It is an otter. And... Oh, I don't know. I tried to do like an otter with like... Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like <I'm back. laughs> Look at that guy. Uh, Amazing. I don't know. Like, he's a he's a philanthropist. He's a man about town. He's giving fish about. He's yes. giving fish to the needy. He's being you know, so kind. Some, you know, some people need, need those fish <laughs> more than he does. So he's a generous guy. <laughs> He's Please tell me or is eat fish because I've just I've based this whole oh, thing. Oh, they have to. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably spreading some awful misinformation <laughs> and they only eat hot dogs, but I don't know, they eat fish for now. Right, <laughs> we've got time for another one then. So I'm gonna show, quickly show you mine, just so you've got reference of what uh, what we're doing. Oh amazing. We're not far off. Not far off indeed. Yeah, we have a similar look, so at all really. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he's got some um, yeah supplies of fish food for the animal sanctuary. So yeah, they were doing the same thing as well, weren't they? So that's yeah, great minds there. Eh? I love it. Right, I'm getting the gold box out again. Did you watch all of James's video? No, I, was, I just watched the start of it. Okay, yeah, good, good, good. Because I was <laughs> going to surprise you with something at the end of it. Uh, okay, second round we have a clumsy fishmonger. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> Thanks to Andy CT for that one. And here it is. Oh, it's a long one again. Who is a bodyguard to a world famous bodyguard? Whoa. <laughs> Inception. <laughs> this is so hard. Oh, yeah. That was uh, Jessica on paper on Twitter. Send that one in. Thank you. That's a really original idea. And oh, we're running out of locations, but this one is a small cafe on Barra Island. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's from Xander again. Ziboto on there. Uh... Oh, I'd like to. Yeah, that is cute. 
like it. So we had a clumsy fishmonger who was a bodyguard to a famous bodyguard on a small cafe on Barra Island. Okay, wow, this is a quite involved one. I might have to pencil some stuff out for this one before I start. That's an interesting... Where, where to start? Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to just go ham on this one and just try and do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Outer Hebrides? I don't know. Um, I've been I've been there once before, and it, I've been to US once before, and it was very very windy. So I don't know if that helps for your picture. It will, it will definitely help. Yeah, thank you. That's good. Uh, very good knowledge. So you've done a lot of uh, fun uh, charity stuff. I have. Yes. Last year, I took part in a thing called Urwilly's Bucket Trail. And if you do you know Urwilly? Yes, I can see him right? behind you there. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a he's a kind of a bit of an icon in Scotland, and he's like really well known for like newspaper comics. And it's almost like a kind of traditional thing where a lot of like kids here get like an Urwilly annual for their Christmas. Right. Fantastic. So last year there was a big um, project where it was like lots of like massive Urwilly statues. They were about four feet or so. So they look like this, but like four feet tall. Wow. When I say there was about 200 odds of them and then they're all like died about Scotland on a kind of trail. <laughs> um, but they were all done by different artists. So I did one, and then there's lots of other people did one, and some of them were crazy. Like some of them had like stuff attached to them, like superhero capes, or one of them had like its brains coming out, and <laughs> one of them had like amazing patterns, and like one was gold, and one was full of like tea cake wrappers and stuff, and, <laughs> and so. For mines, what I did was the charity that it was all for was for the kids' hospitals. So I went into Glasgow Kids Hospital, and what I did is I just like got like the kids that were in there to come and just take a seat for a few minutes. And what I do is I take a portrait of their face, and then draw that onto the Urwelly. So at the end of it, and um, the whole um, statue is just covered in all these little faces of all the kids and stuff that were in there that's um, magic which was cool it took ages but it took about six weeks odd to to finish but and it, it, it did great. look fantastic and i bet all the children were so thrilled to see themselves on this uh on this sort of iconic real uh sort of statue i guess yeah yeah they loved it i think it was more of like more of like a kind of activity for them so yeah. instead of just like a work of art, it was more of like um like an interactive kind of thing for them where like they can get like a portrait painting to themselves, but then when it's on display, they yeah. go see it and be like, Oh, there's me and they get their picture with it and stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That's absolutely lovely. What a great project. And what was the is that all the 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 money went to the um the children's cause, was that right? Yeah, so it got put between three different children's hospitals in Glasgow. And I think all in, the money that was raised was around two million. Wow. Which was was astonishing. I know, I know. What fun, though. That's awesome. I know. It was such a great thing to be be a part of. Such a great project. Um, Awesome. It was great. So have you always drawn? Did you start out um, doing anything else and then change to that, or has it always been a childhood thing? Or it kind of ish. Like I always drew as a kid, and then I'd like to make my own comics and stuff when I was a kid. 
Yeah. And when I got into like my teens and that kind of teenage year, I went away from it and I was more into music and stuff. So I did, yeah. I had this like 10 years or so where I was like going to be a musician and I'm really <laughs> going for it. So I was in bands and stuff for ages and I used to play the bass guitar and yeah. the, the double bass as well. Oh, and wow. Yeah, I used to play in the orchestras and stuff for a bit. Good and then. Stuff. I went to college to do that and then took a few I think I took a year or so out and I think in that year I started getting back into like drawing and then painting on canvases so I used to draw or I used to paint like these big stupid things on canvases I used to do a lot of robots and stuff and just just fun really and then from there got into more like illustrative stuff like with watercolors and things um, and then from there got into like zines and comics and stuff so yeah. I went through a weird route I wasn't always like <laughs> all creative though isn't it it's all, uh, all all creative pursuits yeah do you still do music now uh, not really I still have my guitar and I still fart about with it yeah um, but nothing like serious nothing like uh, professional Fantastic. Maybe one day day I'll get back into it. (laughs) And my bodyguards. (laughs) Yeah, we've got to do more than one bodyguard. Good. So I don't know if I left it in to, uh, James's one or not, but um, sometimes I ask people who I should do next, a drawing one with, uh, and he came up with one name and it was yours. Ah. <laughs> I said, yeah, he's already on my list, but I'll, I'll, I'll bump him up and uh, see, see if we can get Neil on. And then uh, thankfully you, you came and said yes, very generously. I think you should try and get... Timothy Winchester on next. Yeah, I have. We have had discussions. <laughs> Is he shy? Is he too shy? I'm not sure. I think he's busy at the moment, so we shall see. He'll be a lot of fun if we can get him. <laughs> but actually, I should probably contact Kit as well. Actually, do you think, do you think he'd be up for it? I was going to say that. Yeah, I think Kit would be great. He would be. He's, he's amazing. He drew a fish beard for me once at a, at a con, and uh, it was just amazing. It was um, it was just lovely. I was just uh, it's one of those, one of those sort of things that goes. Okay, he's drawn my character like a million times better than I. <laughs> <laughs> So how long have you been doing this? This is a great wee idea. What, the uh, the videos? Yeah. Um, it started um, right at the start of lockdown because um, everybody was kind of rallying around and doing things and sewing masks and, um, you know, <laughs> doing all sorts of things for the effort and helping helping the community and sort of stuff. And I thought, is there anything I can do? I was like, well, my kids just got sent home from school and I was like, well, what can we do? I was like, I wonder if I can go out and, you know, maybe we could, they could look, up, look after some other kids or do something around there. And I thought, maybe I'll just do some drawing videos. I just, because it's been an idea that had gone around in my head for a little while. I was like, well, maybe that's it because that'll keep the, um, keep children entertained for a bit. And, you know, maybe if, you know, if, I, if I teach them games on the, on the channel, then it will, um, you know, keep, keep them entertained for a little while if they haven't got sort of schoolwork and stuff to do. So really, it came out of that. It was just sort of try some drawing games and try and inspire children, which you know, which we've actually had really wonderful feedback on, which I never oh. really thought would would happen, but it's been lovely. And then it sort of morphed into um, having the, the, these sort of creator chats because people were saying, you know, let's get other people on, you know, other artists on, and, and you know, expose people to other art styles and other artists and that sort of stuff with different stories to tell. Um, 
and that's yeah it's just been absolutely magic and like, I, I can't get enough of it now <laughs> i absolutely <laughs> love doing it it's amazing it's a lot of fun i love it yeah it is. Everyone, I think, has enjoyed it so far that we've done it. But I think I have. I said this last time I was doing them, actually. I think I'm saying, how, I don't know how come it's always so fun and it's always so brilliant. And it's because I'm picking all my favourite people. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm loving it because it's, I know I'm picking wonderful people. <laughs> I think it's good because it's kind of it's kind of quick and you don't think about it too much either. Yeah. Do you know? I think if you had all day to draw this, you'd be like humming and hawing and then rubbing all the stuff <laughs> Exactly. Out. Yeah, you can't afford to spend too much time sort of thinking about it and uh, planning things because you just got to get stuff down. And it is so random, you can't sort of spend any time beforehand sort of prepping for it because you then you, you put out man-sized otter and then you're, you're wrong-footed. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how the cafe on Barrow's doing as well. I know, I know. Could you pop in and see? I could, I mean, <laughs> it's a while away. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know actually, like, I know like a lot, of, there was a lot of stuff on the news about people flocking to Sky because uh, really? people, I think even Neil Gaiman was like, I'm away to Sky. <laughs> <laughs> There was like a big influx in like um, the virus there, and everyone was just like, "Geez, or um, just because it got like loads of people coming from like mainland Scotland going over yeah. to Sky and then balls and up." <laughs> um, <laughs> of course, yeah, that's the uh, that's the big advantage you get if you're completely uh, isolated out there, and then everyone else comes and tries to. Uh, Jump on the bandwagon, as it were. Oh. It is tempting, though. Like, I was in Sky yeah. with Ashley last year, and it was lovely. It was su such a nice wee escape, but for such a small place, yeah, it's like a, a wee island. It is like stowed with tourists. Oh yeah, my friend went there recently. Took some wonderful pictures, actually. And because uh, it's such a, a wee place, the island's not really built for it. Like the roads and stuff are tiny. Yeah. Um. So I wonder. Like I hope they're doing okay. I think obviously the kind of tourism there will be taking a hit, but I think the locals yeah. will be getting a wee break, which is good. Yeah, hopefully so. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, you wonder. It's affecting everybody in different ways, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, a clumsy fish. Clumsy fishmonger. And he is a uh, bodyguard to a famous bodyguard on Berra Island. There's a lot of elements to get in these. You've uh, you've drawn some hard ones, actually. So. <laughs> Let's see. How's Herman? He's good, yeah. Um... I can maybe go get him if you want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's not going to disturb him or you. No, I'll go get him. Um, he's doing good. He's been quite active, actually. I think it's because of the... Um, just because of the summer, really, and because of uh, the sun. Like, he just... Yeah. Um, it's like... Reptiles love the sun, obviously, because they're cold-blooded. And once he gets, like, heated up and charged up, he's just, like, he's running about all day. <laughs> Banging into stuff, stomping around. <laughs> uh, um, uh, how old is Herman? Herman's obviously a tortoise, which is to say. Yeah, he's, um, I think he's 16, 17. 
Oh, wow. Which in Tortoise years is about 16 or 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a long term pet, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a lifetime commitment. How, how long have you had him for since he was a baby? Yeah, I've had him since he was three. So, oh, wow. 13, about 13, 14 years ish. Yeah. A long time. Yeah. Uh, if you give us a wee sec, I'll go get him. Right. Yeah, oh, thank you. See how he's doing. Love to see him again. There so, he is. This is Herman. He's a wee bit sleepy. Hi, Herm. So this is him. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, look at your eye. It's a big eye. Yeah. Great to see you. I presume you've got to. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, you are looking a bit lively now, aren't you? Wiggling, giving us a little wave. <laughs> Give him a wave, Herman. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> how, often do, how, how much does he sleep when he's uh, obviously out of hibernation? Is it, is, it, is it sort of a normal night or is it uh, more it's out than a normal night? Yeah, you tend to sleep. Just after dinner time, um, about seven or eight, and then he'll just pop up again about seven in the morning ish. Um, so pretty normal. <laughs> and then when he hibernates, it's about four months. Right, and that's during the winter, yeah. Yeah, so he'll go to sleep in um, about November, and then he'll pop up about. March sometime usually. How do you know when to get him out? I just time it. Um, oh, just, right. I'm just like that's your four months. <laughs> Time to yeah, wake up. Sure. <laughs> but it's uh, it's fascinating. Like he um in that whole time he just he hasn't eaten anything. Yeah. Like before he goes in, he uh, fasts for a month. So that whole time he doesn't eat for five months. Oh, wow. Absolutely. It's fascinating. Is he, is he must be really hungry when he comes out. Yeah, he's just a, like a bottomless pit. <laughs> <laughs> what does he eat? He eats mostly weeds. So, like oh, the, really? yeah, like the kind of weeds you see when you're out and about, uh, yeah. like uh, dandelion weeds. Ah, oh, lovely. Uh, buttercup weeds and stuff like that. And also, like, for a treat, you'll get, like, a wee tomato. Nice. Or um, very rarely you'll get, like, a wee strawberry or something. But <laughs> very rarely, like, you, they're not really meant to get fruit or anything. Oh, and really? Just, yeah, it's, just, it's meant to be like just weeds, really. But, um, but yeah, he's, they do eat a lot. They do, they, um, they really, they can put it away. Yeah. Can you tell if you're overfeeding? I suppose you can't see if he's putting on weight, can you? <laughs> um, I can weigh him, I think. Oh, good, thank uh, you. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think there's a chart that I found where it's like shell to weight ratio. Okay. Where you can tell if you've got a, an overweight tortoise or not. <laughs> you put him on the treadmill on the slowest setting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. No, he looked in fine shape to me. He's doing great, yeah. <laughs> He gets, he can get a top speed on, he can get a fair uh, jog on. Yeah. He wants to, he ran away once actually. Uh, Did he? <laughs> a couple of years ago. Um, when I used to stay at my mum's, I think my mum had him out. And she was hanging up the washing and stuff and then turned around for a minute. Then he was gone. Oh no. He was away. So he, it turned out he was away for a good three days or so we'd lost what? him really yeah i thought that was him but um he was about i think he was about three gardens away 
<laughs> just chilling out, yeah. <laughs> and it was funny because I had to put like signs and things around the neighborhood being of like, course, yeah. I have lost my tortoise, <laughs> it has run away. Please call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's brilliant where's your mum live uh glasgow as well oh, okay not too far the same the same side yeah good stuff <laughs> i bet people were photographing those posters and putting them all over the social media i know because i was trying to like shit at social media and stuff and i just had all these comments people snagging me off being like, oh no how do you lose a tortoise <laughs> Oh dear, he ran away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gorging himself on weeds. <laughs> Come on, almost there. I just need a bit of your back. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, I'm just adding a, a few colours to mine now. Properly windy on Berra. Is, nothing but wins. <laughs> Have you joined in any of these virtual uh, cons? I haven't, no. I remember right at the start, I put up a big, I kind of tried to do my own kind of virtual comic-con because i had to pull out of some conventions and uh, yeah, it, yeah. it was just me tweeting all my books and stuff and just really like shamelessly plugging <laughs> all, the, all yeah. my friends because i thought why not like i've lost out i may as oh, well yeah i might as well go whole hog on it absolutely uh, yeah and I saw the good bunch of stuff which was great good 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 that's really good yeah and absolutely yeah it's um you know that that's part of the living there going so you need to uh need to recoup so what's a virtual con is that like a big kind of zoom thing that people i, I think they do kind of uh, a one at a time sort of thing so they do a few sort of um talks with various people and then they'll they'll, uh, they'll talk through their books and show their table sort of thing um everyone's doing it slightly differently the um the Lakes uh, International Comic Festival has got one live at the moment, so I've got a store on there. Wow. Because um, I was due to be at the, the, the oh. festival. So, um, yeah, they do, everyone's got a little virtual uh, store on there with um, some, some products in focus. Um, but, yeah, I, mean, I suppose, yeah, it's, it's always hard when these things get cancelled en masse. And, um, yeah, you've got to do what you can do. And that's, you know, that seems like a nice idea. Amazing. Good stuff. This is nearly done, I think. Yeah, same, same, just What's your favourite bit of your drawing? I think it's my fisherman. The fisherman. My clumsy fisherman. <laughs> I think mine's the fish that he's dropping. And we are done there. Good. Right, I'm going to cast that aside and do one last thing with you now, Neil, if that's all right. If you've got uh, enough time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, redo that. Okay, I'm going to pull one thing out of here from the side out of the big gold box. And uh, this is a. <laughs> I'm going to put that back and choose another one because that one's <laughs> not doable for this sort of thing. I'm being completely honest. Okay, we have our good friend. Do you know Russell Mark Olson? I think so. I think I know his stuff, yeah. What wonderful artist, sort of uh, Silver Age of Comics um, artist, a brilliant guy. Um, he has suggested an Ace of Base CD. 
right? Do you remember Ace of Base? Yeah. Very vaguely for me as well. What we're going to do is we're going to draw that with our eyes closed. How do you feel about that? Uh, I can't picture it. Is it to be based on the CD or have I to do, draw my own CD cover? It's up to you, but you've got to do it all with your eyes closed. Let me, okay, let me take one look. At an ace okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same. Yeah. Google Ace of Base just to see what, because uh, <laughs> I seem to have a slumber memory, but. Um... Right. Well, one's like a big disco ball. And then one's like a uh, kind of rose kind of. Yeah, I can see the rose one here. Yeah, and there's a few of them, just uh, four of them. Base. But yeah, I'm not going to be trying too uh, ambitious with it, but let's try. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, I'm good to go. I feel where your instrument is, and one, two, three, go. <laughs> Look, lost my bearings already. Right. I think that's about the best I can do. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to look. Oh, wow. That's, um, well, it could have been worse. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm not far off. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is brilliant. <laughs> Very impressive. My thing is less impressive. I tried to draw the members on there as well. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> You're very kind. Good stuff. Right, while I add a little bit of colour to my last piece here, check out your work. Sure. So my website is just neilslawrence.com and my Twitter and Instagram are just at neilslawrence and my Facebook is called Art by Neil Slawrence and that's pretty much everything. That's yeah, everywhere that's you can get me, if you want to get me. <laughs> I'm sure people will. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have uh, all of these uh, ones I've shown on camera as well. And obviously there's Pirate Fun as well, which is I don't have to hand at the moment. That must be upstairs with, with one of my daughters. Um, but yeah, I would re highly recommend um, Neil's work. Great all ages um, artwork in all of those. And the, the travelogues especially are, are full of um, wonderful, heartwarming uh, stories, full of pathos and uh, wonderfully illustrated. So yeah, I would highly recommend checking Neil out. Oh, it's just strange for me to say uh, thank you very much for uh, being on Fishbeard's Draw with me, Neil. Thank you. Cheers. See you. Bye bye.